a bioteam. So there's a lot of different types of cells that we'll talk about in this course. Uh, but what all of these cells have in common is that they all serve as survival vehicles for DNA. Now that's not a metaphor. Over billions of years, DNA has found ways to build uh, proteins and structures uh, that help them survive. And that's all the different parts of a cell really are, just equipment that helps the DNA replicate. Uh, so for example, the nucleus is just a membrane around the DNA that keeps it all concentrated together and helps it replicate more efficiently. And it's from the nucleus that DNA will transcribe uh, the messenger RNA that it uses to build proteins. Uh, and in order to synthesize those proteins, the DNA will send the mRNA to ribosomes. There's two types of ribosomes. There's uh, ribosomes that are freely floating uh, in the cytoplasm. And uh, these ribosomes will translate proteins that get used in the cytoplasm. For instance, it's uh, these free ribosomes that produce uh, the cytoskeleton, which is just a structure of filaments and tubes uh, that give the cell support and help it move. Uh, now, the other type of ribosome that DNA can send messenger RNAs to are called attached ribosomes. And it's attached ribosomes that will build proteins to be shipped to other parts of the cell or even other cells entirely. Now, what does the shipping is the endoplasmic reticulum, whose main job is to process and send these proteins that get translated. Now, there's two types of endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, there is the rough endoplasmic reticulum, which has ribosomes attached to it, uh, which give it kind of a rough feel and a rough appearance. And then there's the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, whose job is to make membranes to package these proteins in. And we call these packages uh, vesicles, which are just tiny bubbles of lipid, tiny fat bubbles uh, that wrap around the protein and allow it to pass through uh, other membranes. As for where the protein actually gets shipped to, if it's an enzyme, it might get shipped to the lysosomes or peroxisomes. Uh, whose main job is to break down waste material using enzymes. Uh, if the protein is not an enzyme, it might get shipped to uh, the cell membrane, where it could serve as a channel protein, uh, letting some things into the cell and keeping other things out of the cell. Or last, it might uh, get shipped out of the cell entirely. For instance, if it's a, uh, a hormone of some sort that's needed to send a message to other cells, uh, in which case it might get packaged in a membrane at the Golgi bodies and shipped out of the cell entirely. So here we've got a tiny vesicle surrounding uh, this protein. And the protein leaves the cell. Now there's a couple of other tools that help power this process. Uh, for instance, in plant cells, there are chloroplasts, uh, which help build the sugar that the, the cell runs on. Uh, the mitochondria are the stuff that actually use that sugar uh, to recharge ATP in the cell. And last, there are vacuoles that store uh, supplies that the cell needs. So for instance, plant cells are known for very large water vacuoles. Uh, but vacuoles can also store other stuff like uh, food or enzymes. Now, if the cell is successful and it grows and it uh, is ready to divide, it can use another organelle called centrioles, which are just tiny bundles of protein filaments. Uh, and some cells have the ability to move independently. For instance, some cells have flagellum, uh, little tails that help them swim or cilia, which can pull them through fluid, or uh, even some amoebas and other cells have uh, pseudopods uh, in which they stretch out their cell membrane uh, as like a fake foot that helps pull them around. And that's it. At this point, you guys have some practice. Uh, we'll see you next class.